we're going to go to the pre-launch of our book, which is a very exciting bit for us here. Uh, we have uh, Dr. Susan Karamanian from uh, Hamad bin Khalifa University, the Dean of College, uh, the Dean of the College of Law. Thank you so much for joining us, Dr. Susan. I'll leave it to you. Great. Uh, thank you so much, Reem, and uh, good morning uh, from Doha. Uh, we are a hundred under 100 days away from the World Cup. Uh, and uh, it gives me great pleasure to be able to talk about something other than uh, sports uh, emanating from the Middle East and one that has a strong link to um, Australia. Um, first, before I share insight into the project, um, I'm delighted to participate in this Ost Arab uh, Tawasol uh, sponsored by Flinders University, and uh, many thanks to uh, professors uh, Vivian Brand and also to Hussein Esmeli for their hard work in, the, in making this event possible and also uh, for inviting me to participate. Uh, special thanks as well to Dr. Reem Alhmani from Flinders and a lecturer in law King Abdulaziz University for her help in coordinating the presentation. I appreciate it a lot. Um, a few years ago, uh, Vivian and Hussein reached out to me to present the keynote address at the Conference on Arab-Australian Investment and Trade Law. Uh, that event was sponsored by the Australian Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade, the Council of Arab-Australian uh, Relations, as well as some other sponsors. Uh, the conference was designed to facilitate the development of Arab-Australian investment and trade relationships. Uh, COVID-19 came, the conference was delayed, yet eventually it was held online. And I would say that um, the online um, platform gave, gave uh, the event even more success, I think, than if it were held, uh, for example, in Adelaide, just like today's event and the technology that we just, we just heard, uh, the way we're able to communicate with, with the, word, the world. And in particular, it gave us a broader engagement with the Arab world. So speakers and participants shared their, their knowledge on a variety of legal issues relevant uh, to the Middle East and Australia in an effort to uh, promote understanding, reduce legal cultural barriers. Uh, at the event, a wide range of subjects were, were covered, uh, ranging, you know, for example, from financial fintech regulation, corporate accountability in the area of climate change, regulation of autonomous vehicles and other disruptive technologies and dispute re resolution, including arbitration and transborder insolvency. Um, through our interaction, uh, Vivian and Hussein then took the concepts discussed and analyzed at the conference to their logical uh, conclusion. Uh, the publishing of, of a book on the general conference theme along with uh, its extension uh, beyond the region. And so today we are pre-launching uh, the international trade with Middle East and in North Africa, uh, legal, commercial, and investment perspectives. And this will be published by uh, Rutledge Press as one of the Rutledge monographs. And uh, I'm very delighted to join uh, Vivian and Hussein as a co-editor. And we are so grateful for Dr. Uh, Reem Alifani's help uh, with, with the book too. I think that we want to step back and say why this book. I, I was just, you know, in listening to the earlier presentations and the role of technology and, and Hussein did say, well, we have a, a book as, as well, to, to, to completely understand uh, developments. I think it, it takes all types of, of platforms and uh, traditional books are, uh, I think, included a, a one uh, among, among them. Um, the Arab world is, a, is vibrant, as, as you know, it's diverse. It's a commercial hub, uh, but it is one, uh, unless you're in the region on a regular basis, the perception about the law, the perception about legal standards, the role of the rule of law, I think is a bit uh, misunderstood, perhaps even misplaced. So first, uh, there is a sense, an unfounded one, I would argue, that laws and courts are just simply not equipped to handle complex commercial matters that the substantial uh, foreign investment and commercial activities uh, raise, even though we do have a lot of, of commercial activities and foreign investment. Um, information about the region is, is dated. I think there's no question about that. That was a review we conducted. And they'll see new work shedding light on standards and their ap application, I think, will dispel uh, this notion. Second, there's um, a lack of readily available information about legal standards 
as to new technologies. Um, I work in Education City here in Qatar. You only need to, to walk around campus and see the emergence of pathbreaking research in the areas of artificial intelligence. We just, we just heard about algorithms um, and area of precision medicine. And to appreciate uh, the importance of having a grasp on how the law will uh, address uh, emerging technologies. Third is the global importance of the region. Um, I don't think this can be understated. Uh, obviously, the developments over the past six months with the war in Ukraine have emphasized that um, and the ramp up in exports of natural, natural gas. In a, in a similar vein, the region's engagement with international to institutions has not been fully developed and appreciated. So international trade and uh, with the Middle East and North Africa uh, will fill this gap and does a lot more, I would argue. Uh, the book has key parts focusing on international trade law and cross-border financial uh, services, very important when we're looking now, particularly in areas of sanctions and the like. Another section on corporate investment and cross-border insolvency law. I was just delighted when I was looking, you know, through through the uh, proposed chapters on cross-border insolvency. Uh, one of our students here at HBKU just wrote an essay in the paper about the need for Qatar to adopt the UN UNCTRAL model law in, in its in its legal system on cross-border insolvency. We have a financial institution here in Qatar, the, uh, the Qatar Financial Center, that has adopted it. So I think that'll be interesting to explore uh, uh, these developments. Um, the, the third will be on property ownership and trust, very imp important topic, uh, one that uh, touches on a lot of uh, critical Islamic principles, and we have leading experts engaged on that topic. And then, and then also one on technology and the future of, of mobility, the challenges that technology and the benefits technology poses for all of us, but also the, the important legal issues. Um, I think with an emphasis on the region's engagement with Australia, and that will be built in the book too, uh, the book will become a go-to source uh, for upcoming decades on the legal landscape here in the region. Um, let me just give you a little insight into the contributors. I'm not going to name them because we could be here all day, but they include legal academics, uh, but also academics from uh, business and education. Um, as well as academics in the, the, the science technology transfer field. Now we have legal practitioners, of course, those that are on the ground here working in, in the subject areas and, and can provide unique insights as to the practical application of legal principles. Um, and uh, so uh, we also have two, two judges who are contributing to the book from Egypt. Um, so with an interdisciplinary approach, um, I believe the book promises, uh, uh, the promise that the book will be written to inform the reader in a readable and usable manner. Um, international trade at, with the Middle East and North Africa uh, will open a window on a growing yet still relatively unexplored um, legal landscape. So uh, first, it's an honor to work with everyone on this important project. I'd in particular like to thank um, Avin, Vivian and Hussain for their, their, their leadership at Flinders University for uh, enabling this to uh, be possible. Thank, as, thank you as well, Reem. And look forward to working with all the contributors and having all the manuscripts in uh, in 2023. So we will have an appropriate launch of the book. Uh, so happy to take any, any questions or hear any comments from uh, my fellow contributors and the editors. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Dr. Susan, and we also appreciate having all our chapter contributors online today. Um, and if you do have any questions about the book, just pop them in the Q&A live and we'll come back to them at the end of the uh, today.